The SE5 was a fine machine. It, it was a machine that pretty well couldn't be broken up through hard handling in the air. It had a good engine, it was reliable, it was manoeuvrable, it had no vices, it was a fine aeroplane. But still, it wasn't as good as the enemy whom we were sent up to deal with. And this was chiefly noticeable, not in manoeuvrability, but in height. Uh, if we were up at 16,000 feet, we would find the albatrosses and the Fokkers at 17 and 18,000 feet. And this is crucial in any aerial combat because the man with the height dives on you, zooms up again, he's got his height, he's driven you down perhaps a thousand feet, you come up again, but you're always below him, you see. And this is a uh, a very uh, tricky situation to be in, really, because you're always, as it were, at a disadvantage. Uh, not that our own morale, I must say, was in any way uh, hurt by this. Uh, morale was terrific right through the summer. Uh, there was no question of, of being... Uh, browbeaten, as it were, by the enemy. We didn't worry. We could engage. We could fight. When we got him down on our own level, we could engage, and we were just as manoeuvrable and even more manoeuvrable than he was. But we had this disadvantage always that our performance really wasn't quite so good as, as the people we were up against. And we were also numerically out, outnumbered most of the time, which was nothing for us to meet 30 or 40 uh, enemy aircraft in one, in one formation. And we were never more than 12. Our squadron was a 12 aircraft squadron, so we couldn't exceed that number. So we had to fight in those conditions. And of course the hazards are, are obvious, the hazards of war, or hazards of being shot down. But over and above that, the hazards of, uh, of not being able to get out of the aeroplane, not being able to jump, no, no, having nowhere to go to. I mean, uh, you had to just sit tight and take what came. We used to take off on these big squadron offensive patrols, usually in the afternoon. Ran our engines up for two or three minutes, water cooled engines, time to get them warm. And then took off severally, and at about 500 feet, we'd begin to get in formation and head slowly out towards the lines. Clinging close together, about 20, 30 yards between each machine, swaying, looking at our neighbors, keeping our throttles, setting ourselves just right so that we were all in position, as it were. Our business was offensive. That's to say we used to climb up to get height, this side of the lines, and then when we got our height, uh, go over and look for trouble. Our eyes were, of course, continually focusing, looking, craning our heads round, moving all the time, looking for those black specks which would mean enemy aircraft at a great distance away. And then sooner or later, we would find the enemy, or spot the enemy. If it was lucky, it would be below us. When we spotted the enemy formations below us, we used to engage irrespective of if there was anybody above or not, and just chance it. Having no communication with each other, uh, we simply had to go in and take our man and chance our arm and uh, keep our eyes in the back of our heads to see if anybody was trying to get us as we went down. You know, it's not really possible to describe the action of a fight like that. And so the whole squadron would enter the fight like that in good formation, but within half a minute the whole formation had gone to hell. There was nothing left except just chaps wheeling and zooming and diving on each other's tails, perhaps all four in a row even, you know. A German going down, uh, one of our chaps on his tail, another German on his tail, another hand behind that. I mean, uh, extraordinary glimpses one got, or people approaching head-on, firing at each other as they came, and then just at the last moment turning and slipping away. The fight lasting perhaps for altogether 10 minutes a quarter of an hour would, would come down from 15,000 feet right down to almost the ground level. By that time probably ammunition exhausted, guns jammed or something like that, and then there'd be nothing left but to come back home 